Hi, welcome back to The Distressed Princess. I'm Rhonda, and here's the DIYs I'm working on today. To start off today, I'm working on this antique mirror that I found at a junk store for only $10. I had this vision to transform this old mirror into one of the trendy gold frame ones that you see with the embellishments. Without the big trendy price tag, of course. This is the cheapest one I could find and it's at Target. And these are the other products I bought to make the transformation. They all came from Hobby Lobby. We have antique gold rub and buff and that comes in different colors and I wasn't sure between the gold leaf and the antique gold but since I'm going for antique look why not antique gold and then these wooden embellishments that if you catch them on sale they'll be half off. If you're working with a thrifted mirror like I am then the first thing you're going to want to do is clean it. And this is a really old mirror, so it's not going to have a perfect shine to it. It's got some imperfections. The first step I'm going to do is to apply the antique gold rub and buff. And at first I chose to wear gloves to do this. The instructions say you can put it right onto your fingertip or on a soft cloth or a brush. So I decided to try this method first. And it's just as simple as can be. You just rub the stuff on until it's all rubbed in and you'll know when it's completely rubbed in because it, it won't budge anymore. And I put painter's tape down to protect the mirror when I had to do the inside parts. And I continued applying the rub and buff all over with my gloved fingers. If you have any problems getting into corners or nooks and crannies, then I'd suggest using a brush. What's really awesome about this stuff is there's no wait for drying time. I, it's just done when it's done and you can't rub it in anymore and it doesn't come back off. So, and it, it's dry to the touch and easy to work with. Next, I wanted to work on the wooden embellishments and I always keep these toothbrushes on hand from the Dollar Tree just in case I need to use them for cleaning purposes or crafting. And so I'm going to apply the gold rub and buff with this toothbrush. I wasn't lucky enough to catch this on sale, so I paid $6 for this one piece, but you know how Hobby Lobby has their 50% off sales on a lot of stuff, and you could get this possibly for $3. And this package of two wooden pieces was $2.49, so half off would be about a dollar and a quarter. I applied the gold to the toothbrush and began brushing it onto the large wooden piece and it was going on really well. All was going great until I realized I should have paid closer attention to the wooden pieces before I began putting the gold on because they were kind of rough around the edges, sort of splintery, and they really need sanded down a little bit. So then I had to stop and go find my sanding block. I'm completely out of sanding paper. I need to remember to get some, but sanding block worked okay too. Also, there were some parts that didn't completely get cut out. So I used my small utility knife to cut off those wood pieces that needed trimmed. Now that the wood pieces were tidied up a little bit, I continued putting the gold on and this was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed using this toothbrush to apply this gold rub and buff to these wood appliques. And the last step to this DIY is to attach the wooden pieces. So I laid them out exactly where I wanted them to go 
and then I stuck them down using E6000 for a good permanent hold and I also used some hot glue just to hold them in place until the E6000 sets. And this just couldn't have turned out any better than I had imagined. I am loving the gold. And this is how I actually have it decorated in my room right now. I am still with a winter theme because we have a winter ice storm at my house right now. And so this is going perfectly with my winter stuff. I'm very excited to show you guys. I got a brand new decoration for my house today. It came in the mail and you're going to get to see me unbox it. I haven't even looked at it yet. It's a Sun Mori floor lamp. So here we go. This gold lamp reminds me of an antique. I love the way it's curved and it comes with a frosted glass lampshade that won't show fingerprints and i also like the switch that turns it on and off it's this nice switch that you can turn they even sent a light bulb with it these are the other pieces with the cord running through it and all you have to do is screw them together using your hands there's no tools required and I love the beautiful frosted glass lampshade. It's so different than the material fabric lampshades that I always get. And so I'm really excited to see what this looks like when it's all lit up. And the last piece is the base. And when I picked this up out of the box, I realized this is a really heavy base and I have a, a similar lamp to this and it's not near as sturdy. This is heavy. It would take a lot of force to knock this lamp over, which is a good thing because you know I have rowdy cats in the house. Assembly was really easy. I had it all put together in less than 10 minutes because all you have to do is screw these little pieces together. and then screw the whole assembly into the lamp base. Remove the nut that's going to hold the lampshade in place and put the lampshade on and replace the nut. And lastly, put the light bulb in. And this is a special light bulb that they've sent. It comes with a brighter light and a warmer light, so you can pick your mood. I've put my lamp in the living room and I'm loving the gold. I've been liking so much black stuff when it comes to my lamps and pieces like this. The, the gold is new, it's what's in, on trend right now, and I'm really, really happy with it. And I'm also very happy with the frosted lamp shade so that it won't get fingerprints on it and it's just a nice soft effect. 
Besides a living room or family room, I really think this would be a beautiful lamp to put in a bedroom as a reading light. And in the daytime, when it's not turned on, it's just as beautiful. So in conclusion, I'm loving my Sun Mori lamp. I'm so glad that I've got it. And if you want one too, I'll put a link in my description box so you can go to their website and choose your own. The next DIY came out of necessity. I really like this lotion from the Dollar Tree. I like to put it on before bed, but I dropped it and the pump broke off of it. So I wanted to find something else to put it in and I had this glass bottle that I've had for a long time. Something else came in it, maybe some soap from TJ Maxx or something. And I'm going to put a new label on it and I'm going to turn that pump gold. I started out applying the gold rub and buff with the toothbrush, but I didn't like how that was going on. It was having a scratchy effect. So then I ditched the toothbrush and I just used my bare fingers, which I've seen other people do on YouTube videos and the back of the package says that it'll wash off with soap and water. So I figured it'd be okay. And out of these projects today, this was the best thing that I applied this to. This metal soap pump was so much fun to apply this gold to because it went on so smooth and so easy and it just looks like it was always gold, like it never even was black to begin with. Next, I printed out the label I made in Canva, and I will put a link in my description box below if you all would like to use it too. So I cut it down so it will fit around my lotion bottle. Then I cut a piece of clear contact paper, just slightly larger than the size of the label, and that's what's going to stick it onto the jar. And I used this technique in one of my previous videos, one or two videos back, I can't remember, and I used this for candle labels. And so I'm just doing the exact same thing again here, only I'm going to do this with a lotion bottle. And here she is all cute and perfectly matching my new golden mirror and I didn't have to spend anything to get a new bottle. For the next DIY, I'm going to do some fun artwork using a 16 by 20 inch canvas that you can get at Five Below. They come in a two pack for $5 and some different colors of yarn from the Dollar Tree. You'll also need some glue. I'm using this clear crafters glue from the Dollar Tree and you'll need your hot glue gun. This video is kind of out of order. I should have painted my border on first. It was sort of an afterthought. That's just kind of how crafting goes with me. I decide later on I might need to add a little something. So, but if I had it to do over again, I would paint my border first, which you'll see me do later. The artwork I'm making is just some circles, different colored, lively, bubbly circles out of these really cute colors of yarn. And so the best way that I found to do this is to put a little dot of hot glue to start where your center of your circle is going to be. And that's going to hold your yarn down firmly and quickly so that you can then wrap the yarn into a circle uh, sticking it down with the clear craft glue as you go and then the craft glue will do the rest of the work for you but you want to start out with the hot glue so you have a strong hold in the center and I started out doing a glue row by row but I found out that it would go a lot quicker if I just did a large enough circle of glue like put fill in a whole large circle of glue and then wrap the yarn inside that circle of glue 
As long as you don't make your circle so big that the glue will get dry before you get your yarn wrapped to the outer edge of it, if that makes any sense at all. But just do what works best for you and it's gonna look cute in the end. When I got the circle as large as I wanted it to be, then I cut the yarn and I used the end of my scissors to tuck the tail under a couple of the layers. I continued this process to fill up the whole canvas with different sizes and colors of circles. And this is some relaxing, busy work if you're looking for any to do. When I first started this project, I thought that was all I was going to be doing was making these yarn circles and on this canvas and that was going to be it. But I was so inspired and <laughs> I loved using that gold rub and buff so much that I wanted to add some gold onto this canvas too. Now I did try the gold rub and buff on a little part of the back of the canvas. I tested it out and I didn't feel like it was going to do very well on canvas. So instead of using the gold rub and buff, I'm using this gold enamel paint and I'm going to tape off a couple of sides of this canvas and I'm going to paint some gold on. Now, like I said earlier, had I realized I was going to want a gold frame on this, I would have painted this on first before I put the yarn down, but you guys can learn from my mistakes and do your border first. And I want you guys to see how nice this gold paint turned out being. It is the folk art enamels in metallic gold. This little metal heart came from the Dollar Tree and I thought it would be the perfect candidate to use the gold rub and buff on and I wanted to make a little trinket tray out of it. So the first thing I did was cut off the jute string hanger. Then I traced out the heart onto some heavy printed cardstock. And I cut it out and it will go on the bottom inside of the trinket tray. And using my fingers, I applied the gold rub and buff all over the heart tray, the inside and outside. I used the clear craft glue from the Dollar Tree to stick the cardstock down inside of the heart, but I used a foam brush to spread it around so that it would get stuck in all the areas. And that's it for this one. I'm going to use it to hold my rings and bracelets. Let's take a look back at all of our gold accent pieces today.
Thanks for watching everyone. This was a really fun one. I hope you all enjoyed it. And if you want to see more DIYs, click the link that I provided for you right here. And I'll see you next time. Bye.